Well, most of you know today is the 15th Sunday of Ordinary Time. But it also happens to be the feast day of Louis and Zélie Martin, the parents of our own Saint Therese, and four other daughters who also became nuns. They're model spouses, devoted parents. One was a watchmaker, the other a lace maker. They were attentive to the poor, and they accredited their attendance at Mass and their deep devotion to the Blessed Virgin for all of the strength that they were able to gather to raise their family. But most importantly, we should never forget that they were parents, like many of you out there. Similar hopes and dreams, problems and challenges. Listen to these quotes from Zelie, collected from her letters that she wrote as a young mother. Even saints need a maid sometimes. We all have bad days. Children do not always do as they are told. Therese behaved like a normal three-year-old. Nothing really special here, or is there? I expect Therese learned a lot of the basics that formed her little way at home, something we should all try and put into practice. And our readings today, our readings today are about hope, the essence of a family life. These words from scripture remind us that we can transform ourselves by listening to and acting on the Word of God. The stories of Louis and Zelie and Therese and her sisters, they're all stories of hope. Hope and the courage to trust that God will provide. Their stories recognize the importance of keeping God in our lives. A simple reminder to thank God for the many blessings we have received. Today's first reading is God's invitation to a people who had been separated from their Jewish traditions. The people of Israel at this time were slaves in exile in the region known as ancient Babylon, which today is basically Baghdad. They had no temple for worship and they couldn't offer their traditional sacrifices. But they did have prophets. And God, through his prophet Isaiah, speaks a gentle word of invitation with a clear image they could all understand. Just as from the heavens the rain and the snow come down, and they do not return until their work is done, my word shall be the same. It will achieve the end for which I send it. Today's gospel finds Jesus teaching about life in the streets to ordinary people, mostly farmers. The parable of the sower is very familiar to us. It would have also been easily understood by those hearing it for the first time. Sowing seed in the various types of soil that you could sow it upon was something that was part of their daily life. Being a farmer was not an easy job. But this group of farmers would have laughed hysterically as Jesus talked about the stupid farmer who put seed in places it would never grow. They would have laughed and he would have had a happy audience listening. But just like God's word, that seed fell everywhere, not just in the good places. It fell on the good and the bad alike, so that all could hear the word of God. In this parable, the emphasis is on God the sower who sprays the seed, 
who plants, nurtures, produces results. But the interpretation of the parable, the emphasis moves to us as we think about it. Because we are the soil. We are the different places that that seed falls. Do we hear it? Do we receive it? In scripture, God's word is more than spoken. It's a doing word, an active word, a creating word, life-giving, like a seed being watered. And where do we encounter that word? And more importantly, how do we respond to the word? If we are open to the Word of God, we encounter the Holy Spirit unceasingly in all of our experiences of our lives. Whether that experience is joyful or sad, a success or a failure, pleasant or painful, Jesus is the Word of God. Everything that He said, everything that He did, was God communicating with us. And although that parable is self-explanatory, there are parts of it that can use some extra explaining. We have to remember that Jesus knew that some of those listening to him, their hearts had hardened. Even though they had witnessed his miracles, they had heard and seen his forgiveness, his compassion, his love. There were still many who tried to find fault. And this parable was kind of sent to disturb and challenge. You know, those of you who don't receive the word in the proper way, you need to look inside and think about it. And we too will encounter people who don't hear the word the way it was intended the first time. Some may be very close and dear to us, and we know their hearts have hardened for whatever reasons. Unfortunately, some may be racist. They may not have accepted that all are made in the image and likeness of God. They may not have accepted that people can be unfairly treated because of their color or their nationality, where they came from. Some will reject the poor, the homeless, the hungry, even the undocumented as inferior. Some choose to even reject the infirm, the elderly, and the unborn. And that list goes on, unfortunately. Remember, we were all created in the image and likeness of God. As Christians, this culture of contempt is really not acceptable. It's something we need to work against. We are called to remember that every human being is a child of God, a brother or sister in Christ, and everyone possesses a certain amount of human dignity to which they are entitled. You know, last weekend we celebrated Independence Day. In our country, built on unity, unfortunately we have many divisions. This isn't a political statement, but a plea for the Prince of Peace to drop in and inspire some serious and respectful dialogue, conversation that will lead to love, mercy, and forgiveness, and hope. While it can be discouraging when people refuse our efforts to tell them about the Lord, today's gospel reminds us, no matter what the condition of the heart or the soil, We can sow seeds. We can put seeds of prayer out there that God will put good people in our lives and in the lives of those we pray for. 
people that will lead them to him. We can show them the face of God. We hope they will come to embrace. We can sow seeds of dialogue. Unfortunately, we may never know the fruit of the seeds we sow. But we are called to sow persistently and let God bring in the harvest. Pray always that the word you have received, the word you have heard, will remain in your heart. A good heart, like good earth, promotes patience as the roots develop. And then one day, the plant bursts into the sun and is nourished by the rain. Unless we respond to God's invitations, as Louis and Zelie Martin did, we will miss out on the deep healing and hopefulness, the happiness and the peace that the Word of God and the Holy Spirit can bring into our lives.